Okay, starting. When David Maiman turns on his device, the piercing sound and the smell of exhaust leave no question. Those are jet engines strapped to his body. Jet engine, just like your airliner, compressing air with oxygen, mixing it with fuel, lighting it on fire, and squirting it out the bottom. But jets this small and powerful that can safely propel a human into the air have been a long time in coming. The promise of personal flight has seduced decades of aviation junkies, even Mr. 007 himself. Now, after decades of trial and error, engineers have finally constructed machines powerful enough to propel someone into the air over distances long enough to cover many people's commutes. The ultimate expression of freedom is to be able to strap on something like that and just escape. Just go. You know, where do you want to go? You can go anywhere you want. Maiman and his partner Nelson Tyler have spent 10 years creating what they call a true jetpack. After testing models JB-1 through JB-8, Maiman recently flew his JB-9 pack over New York Harbor without a tether for the first time. Other flying machines have been demonstrated by companies using ducted fans or open blades. Tyler would argue that these are not jetpacks. One of Tyler's previous inventions was the rocket belt, used to thrilling effect in the opening ceremony of the 1984 Olympic Games. It used rockets and only stayed in the air for seconds at a time, not a jetpack. I classify a jetpack as something you pick up, put on your back, walk around, and go flying. There are other people that have, quote, jetpacks, but they weigh 400 pounds, they're gasoline, and they're not jets. This is a real live jetpack. So what changed? Drones and smartphones. So there's been a lot of money spent, obviously, by uh, government uh, agencies on drones. That's meant that the engines have to improve. For 100 bucks, I can buy accelerometers or 3D gyros that 10 or 15 years ago, if they existed, they cost $100,000 and they were half the size of a car. New materials are also allowing the jetpack to run safely at higher temperatures. The smaller jets use high-tech sensors to constantly adjust their output and maintain stability. It's not explosive, it's not violent, it lifts you gently from the ground, and the ground dis disappears below you, and you can do whatever you want. You know, it's like being on a bicycle. For now, they're keeping such flights at low altitudes and over water. If it were much higher or over a harder surface... Something goes wrong, you die. <laughs> and we are working on a parachute system that opens in a half a second, uncontrolled by the pilot. It's uh, it, it just this computer says there's something wrong with the engine, and it fires the parachute. Once that's complete, the pack might just be ready for production. But a version for the average consumer is likely to be a long ways off. I think it'll be in the area of $250,000. It's like a very expensive uh, Bentley or Ferrari. Still, Maiman looks forward to the day when using the pack becomes a common form of transportation. I think we can get there. People can use personal VTOL, what we call VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing devices like this to commute in the future, absolutely. Revolutionizing personal transportation, or two guys with a fly-by-night idea? The future of transportation will answer that question.